Hello and welcome back to another episode of Diaries of Death. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the World of Warcraft Hardcore Challenge of our Frost Mage. Uh, Saiken Clays has made his way <coughs> to the Emerald and Clave in Felwood and we got a couple of quests uh, that we shall be doing. Starting with uh, Timber Maw Ally, which we're going to do down here, uh, where this little friendly bugger called Grazel is uh, giving us the task to slaughter uh, Timber Maws. Uh, Timber Maws affection are new. Uh, they are, in a sense, very similar to Murlocs, as uh, they come in uh, packs and uh, will uh, be very good very good in a sense that they are helping each other densely populated they typically also come uh, with interesting abilities curse of the dreadwood in uh, this case as well as a couple of diseases so we got to be careful these will become also more important as we go to winter wood uh, uh, winter spring sorry uh, which is a late level 50 area that we're going to do later in this playthrough, assuming that we're surviving that long. As you can see, I chucked a <coughs> arcane elixir potion, perfect option uh, for us uh, to do that, hitting very hard with our spells. Crits of 920, holy smokes, that's good. So yeah, we're going to go in hot and heavy this time. <clears throat> Good, more full books are coming and we need to also kill Overlord uh, Roar. That's not too bad, uh, but we got one of these guys essentially for free out of the camp because Full ball camps also are infamous, at least uh, as far as I remember, in making it hard to single pull them. reduced by a thousand four hundred well that is rough man and polymorph breaks just stay in the dead zone here yeah, I'm not too fast about the curse for starters we don't have healing effects and then we do a D curse so I'm not even going to interrupt that oh nice Oh, nice. Look at that. Journeyman's backpack can drop from them. That is so good. Man. All right. Very good. Okay, we, sh we should get another one, uh, one of these. I think that was a rare drop. I can't imagine uh, that uh, journeyman uh, backpacks are that frequent here. Is that pulling anyone? No. That's cool. Finally, got another 14 slot backpack. One 
one of the biggest weaknesses of the character, not having enough uh, room to carry. All right, let me clear out a little bit more. This is, by the way, a great opportunity. Sometimes they're leaving their camps and you gotta seize that opportunity in order to isolate them. So, as I was saying, let me uh, clear most of the stuff here and when I'm at the boss, uh, we are going to continue. So fast forward for you. Alright, after killing lots and lots and lots of Fulberg, uh, we have arrived at their quote-unquote king, Overlord Roar, whom we're going to get down now. Full mana. Uh, let's make sure that we're focusing on him first. By targeting the right one, uh, these three are not linked. I can only pull Overlord Nice try, but I am an undead, so it doesn't really work. Cool. So that is that. We got everything from here that we wanted. Now it's simply time to trade in the quest and see if there are any follow-ups. All right, time. Oh, it's not a bad tunic. We could grind uh, favor here, which we're currently not doing. Uh, we will go for forces of Jadenar next and then we're trading in uh, that follow-up quest let's go okay so we're at the forces of uh, Jadenar corrupted orcs that have given in to chaos uh, fun fact so let's kill a couple of uh, fellow orcs here we need to Get four guardians and four of these jade on our hounds. The hounds are magic resistant, so you already know how I feel about them. Very good. Yeah, they are not that bad. They're not that bad. Cool. And we need uh, the Winter Blossoms as well. Very good. Cultists. No thank you. Only one cast is here. I kill six of them. And here we would need the plant uh, salve uh, these uh, by the way uh, give uh, the infamous fellwood buffs that last for two hours super important for raiding later as it stands at the moment uh, we, have the salve, so we need first to do a few more quests in order to get them of casters here let's shake the death uh, map if I had to take a guess uh, many people are dying here uh, well yeah uh, yes yeah, sort of so that's not surprising this is the main area where people die there are a few down here and some up here where the quests are so I think we're just going to clear the outside and see if we can get all of uh, the enemies uh, without needing to go inside because boy boy do I not want to fight inside. Specifically not against casters. It's easy to aggro multiple of them and then it's very hard to 
to get away from them. These guys do have curse of weakness and shadow word pain. Okay, didn't know that. But of course, we can also just crit them to death. Man, our crits are on point. Three shot of that guy. Good. Always a decent idea. Take the patrols out first. Holy smokes. That damage. Yeah, we're uh, three shotting them. Man, that could be a good grinding spot. The amount of damage that we need. Yes, shield bash, so we gotta be careful not to let them interrupt us mid cast. Oh, we're flying through these guys. Equal level, and they're not standing a chance. Okay, I will fast forward because uh, this yet again is another grind and i uh, see you after the quest. Okay, so uh, this is the last cultist. Time to go. done an admirable job of getting all of them down now it is time to trade in the quest really oh got one down there as well okay let's trade in the quest here and then we're trading in the other one good for starters we are getting the husband's last battle there we go i was expecting a tiny bit more than that that's unfortunate all right, next quest, Forces of Jedanar are killed. And now we got to uh, collect corrupted Moonwell water. Uh, we're not strong enough for the Well of Corruption yet. I think these are satyrs. And if there are potentially two types of enemies that I do have, that, that I would put in the dangerous category, then one would be... Uh, the silithid bugs so everything around that in Tenaris, Euduro Crater and silithid because they just are relatively strong for their level they are just incredibly buff the satyrs however have a similar topic more so one of um, unhealthy amounts of damage um, and stealth ability so typically there is uh, there are a couple of stealthers and if you don't spot them out they can add uh, both of them have the uh, mm, yeah, shared trait that you cannot crowd control them uh, very well uh, neither the uh, silithids nor uh, the satyrs can really be well crowd controlled unless you're just fearing them but that's not a great crowd control and then uh, the satyrs typically also have uh, a couple of nasty abilities either poison backstab or whatnot so i'll be a little bit more careful uh, i don't need to rush anything if we're hitting 20 uh, 52 then might uh, I'll, i might go for that but i don't want to fight orange mobs okay so we're back at the same location as before but this time we gotta get all the way to the end matter of fact we were there the last time but might as well do it yet again and collect water sample so fast forward into the water all right we're all the way up to the pool where we're going to take the sample since I don't mind killing individual mobs, even to free up space, uh, we're just going to clear most of them, and then our job will be to get the water set. Cool. 
back to the hand in. Very good. So we're now officially seeking spiritual aid. Where would we seek that, by the way? With Islin Waters here in the Barrens. Okay. Now we're going to take the quick round. All right, seeking spiritual aid. We got a little bit of a uh, corruption going on, and uh, Eastland Waters here, who we have visited much, much earlier, uh, should tell us what exactly is going on. That is happening. Time to rebuff. Like the druidic uh, RP elements. Good. With that, we are now ready to go back, and then I think we need to officially cleanse it. So that's going to happen next. All right. So we are back in Felwood, cleansing Felwood the quest and we need to extinguish the different brazers uh, there which is a level 55 quest so we're going to hold on uh, to that yet equally to the filled water flask uh, up here we still got strengths of the corruption Felspore um, Ravenger Claw Grizzly. I mean, yeah, we could do that. The other alternative is now to go to the Eurocrata. Uh, that would that would be an option. Speak to Nafian uh, up there would be an option, and independent of it, we could go to the Moon Glade. Get our Wind Rider trade in the seed of life i think i'm going to do that plus the uh seed of corruption uh, uh, assessing the corruption quest it seems like a reasonable approach just doing that uh, handing in a couple of quests and then once we're done uh we're just uh, going to the yonduro crater um yeah i mean a couple of uh, those we are just a tiny bit too low in order to make it um, well and here's the point uh, there are also a few other if, if we're skipping the or if we're going or orange quests right now then we would uh, essentially skip other quests in other locations eastern uh, plaguelands are still there or eastern wastelands rather and yunduro crater uh, would be there so both of uh, these locations um, we would miss out on. Ashara we have already done. So I would say let's do both of those locations and skip the orange quests here. Just be a little bit mindful with the quest level and we should be fine. So next up, I think Yunguro Krata is going to be the name of the game. And uh, But let's do the quest here first. All right, time for us to kill a couple of uh, grizzlies. Help out the friend. See, kindness goes a long way. As for this year. Got another healing potion. So that'll make us stay a little bit safer. For the Grizzlies, these bad boys are from a Feralis quest uh, where the druids asked us to assess just how um, uh, to 
ask us how problematic the situation here is in Felwood. So we're going to kill the Griz uh, Grizzlies and then a couple of Revenger further down the road. Fast forwarding a bit for you. Very cool. So we got most of the wildlife dead. Uh, the bears are already gone. We just need a couple of uh, Revengers. Uh, point being, I got a Songflower Serenade because uh, a level 60 ally um, Paladin had just cleansed one. And this is one of uh, these world buffs that I was talking about. Not quite two hours. Uh, I misremembered that, but it is an hour. And this buff is not to be underestimated because what it rocks. Look at that. Increased chance uh, for melee range or spell critical by 5%. So it's flat out 5% spell crit. That's you, by the way. And on top of uh, that, all attributes increased by 15%, which is a, a mid sized mark of the wild. Uh, a little bit better than mid sized. 40, so it's 150 hit points, uh, additional spell, uh, uh, spell crit around 25, nearly 250 mana, uh, it's just an incredible good buff all around for 60 minutes, so we should make the most out of it, as we can, don't be ashamed to not use it. And as you can see, we're almost done with uh, the uh, doggos as well. So uh, one more and then we can get to Scenarion. Well, not Scenarion, but the Druids of the Moonglaive. All right, so time for the last one. It took a while to find him, but instead of just running aimlessly around waiting for respawn, like a true optimizer, I was just grinding bears non-stop. Got us quite a bit of experience and now uh, we got that done. So we know Feralis is the place to trade that in. Um, we also know that we don't want to fight level 55 uh, enemies specifically since we need to come back at level 54, 55 anyways, just to get even more experience uh, during that time. So we're saving the quests for a little bit later. Um, now let's trade in the quest here and go north to the Moonglade. There is a lot of death here, so that in itself is not very uh, reassuring, shall I say. So we gotta be careful. Good, so we got Timbermore Fold up here, and if my memory serves me well, that should not be a conflicted area yet. Uh, there is this cave, not sure if uh, there was a problem during the cave. Taking that yet, and yes, there is an issue. But I can't make it through the cave. It's just we gotta be careful and beware of like any spawn that could happen. But if my memory serves me well, there shouldn't be that much uh, in the cave. And certainly no elite. At least I don't remember any. But level 54. Yeah, that's not great. Hate to see it, but orange mobs just outright more pain in the rear. Which is why I'm not doing orange quests. The number of resists are just way too high. So in terms of in terms of uh, way, I think it was more or less straight north uh, into the Moonglade, and that also explains why people are dying here. They're just running through, now uh, maybe being caught by the uh, spawn. Fell. And uh, the other one is 
going to the moon base. Oh. The moon base one is what we need. Just need to play it very, very careful. Also won't uh, pull with two little mana, so we want to drink right after this one here. Always anticipating that you pull double. And as you can see, I switched to Frost because of close quarters. All right, so far so good. Yeah, we got another. Uh, 54 yeah, and they do have a rather large aggro radius as well imagine that around that bridge there might be a lot of people dying uh, just jumping down and then either aggro is happening from above or they're pulling multiples we're not going to have such a situation I'll play it very careful hmm. it's what he said before realizing that there are like what five enemies down there sheesh and many of them orange and then there is a patrol and then there's another one holy shoot Yeah, talking about the type of enemies that you don't want to f uh, face. All I want is to get north into the Moonglade. Man, why do the Fulborgs need to be so uncooperative? We'll test Kernda and if he is too much, we're just going to bail. That's the disadvantage of uh, having an orange mob, right? The guy keeps resisting everything. Oh, a lot of spells that we're having. is one of those situations where you could really use a body. Fifty-five is fine. Fifty-five plus an add, not so much.
Good. Well, might be able to sneak by that, but just getting those two. But that's 54s as well. Not the best situation. Let's get an arcane elixir. Just want to make sure I'm not being unreasonable or stupid. This here might trigger the other guy, but... to say it's better to get uh, the one guy that is not orange to us to our advantage. Good, we're making sure that there is absolutely nothing happening. I can see why this is a bit tougher. I don't understand exactly why the quest is 51 plus if the trade then is effectively level 54. Yeah, that's Blizzard's logic of quest design. Dungeon is 51, therefore you can just uh, call it 51. Uh, if there is any other hard stuff happening, I'll just uh, bail out and uh, that's it. Not going to take too much more risk, but I do understand why there is a big red, red dot on the map and why people were dying. Decides to resist and resist and resist. Patrol is it a proper level for us? So need to kill this guy fast because you can see respawn is happening. Kendra. Not without drinking first. There's another one down there. 
Kendra moves into the other direction, so we're behind the crux. And this guy is quote unquote only level 52. Kendra isn't patrolling all the way to here, so it seems that I found a quasi safe spot there. able to pull this without pulling the other one. Yeah, that bridge was tough, man. Zero break. Just had to chain pull, drink in between. Make sure that all the Fulburgs are dying. And unfortunately, quite a few uh, of them were orange. So well, that's a pretty exciting journey. And it teaches us again, don't go into caves, man. Just don't do it. Specifically against orange mobs, this is uh, not good. It's too risky. I shouldn't be doing it. got good buffs so that is fine and again I also didn't feel that there was a point where it could have been to Harry there was always the chance to run out uh, to winter in the spring and just ditch the whole situation but yeah it's generally not advised you can't bypass these guys so you can't fight through all of them unless of course you're rope in which case you could like me do this without much of it problem uh, I do have potion of lesser invisibility so could have used that as well to bypass the pack of five but the one thing that I don't like to do is to go behind a pack that uh, prevents me from getting out so we are in that situation as of now because effectively they had been respawned and we're up against the clock because we need to get out of here so i am aware that that is where we find ourselves however i do have still quite a lot of uh, room to kite from where i'm uh, currently at so yeah it feels safer than just rushing in basically praying what's behind there and to be fair i mean i haven't been here since 11 years so it's not that i know this like the like the inside out evocation is down as well which is typically a get out of jail type of card uh, because i could sheep or crowd control and then just evocate to get at least half mana a uh, mana back that currently is not the case so naturally i'm playing it even more carefully and funnily enough we needed to use uh, evocation for a dual orange pack pull but again funnily enough we're in the moon blade and as long as we're not immediately attacked by an alliance creature this here should be more or less neutral territory if i'm not like totally forgetting what uh, what is happening good never again uh, would i want to go through that cave at the level that i did it it's good for content but it wasn't a smart decision period it was not a smart decision. I fully understand why people are dying here. Good, let's head in the quest and just pretend that. Pretend that that was all done on purpose and that I fully had it planned out. I didn't, by the way. 
but I want to highlight that I did have an escape route. Uh, it was not like randomly just running in. Good. Keep a ramblers. Here is your seed of life. And thanks for the 6000 uh, experience. Uh, plus thanks for uh, thanks for being a good sport, I guess. So, that's fine. Uh, next up, I think we're going to the Yunguru crater from here. Uh, so, let's fast forward to that.